So we've already talked about uh, taxonomy in general, and we have our domains, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And as we continue on and we look at mechanisms of evolution and we get into population genetics and we look at um, the mechanisms that lead to speciation, the word, you know, species, species keeps coming up again and again is what is a species. So we need to define species at least or at least discuss the definition of species. And this will also be one of the topics in our course um, that you'll be having as an assignment in your discussion um, online to actually discuss the species concept um, and research it a little bit more on your own. Um, so right now I'm just going to go over just some um, basics of what is the more accepted defined concept of species and what are some problems with that, what are some alternatives um, that are discussed as well. So, um, the main biological species, the main definition of species comes from what we call the biological species concept um, proposed by Ernest Mayer. Uh, and this essentially says that a, a species is defined as a population of organisms that can interbreed and have fertile offspring. So, uh, population. that can't doesn't mean they do but they can uh, interbreed and they can have viable not only viable sorry uh, well vi viable is important uh, because it means they're they're alive they can actually have offspring they're alive but they have to have fertile offspring because what we're going to see um, as we look at barriers um, between species or for speciation uh, to occur, um, there are certain reproductive barriers. Um, some of these occur before uh, fertilization can occur. So organisms cannot mate because they're, they're in two totally different environments. They're nowhere near one another. They're never going to interact. So they can't mate. So they, they are potentially different species because they don't interbreed. Um, and maybe they don't even have the ability to if they were to be put together. So hypothetically, uh, they could, but maybe they don't because they're just not near one another. But in other cases, the organisms do overlap with one another. They just don't interbreed. They can't interbreed. Some of it's behavioral. For example, two birds um, the, in the United States, the meadowlark is an eastern and western meadowlark. They look almost identical to one another. Um, they're mostly separated geographically, but they do overlap a little bit in the central region of the United States, and they don't mate uh, because they have different songs to call for mates. Um, so they have a behavioral type of isolation. Right? So populations that can interbreed and then they have fertile offspring, which essentially means that the offspring, they have to be able to develop, born, mature, and then become fertile enough so that they can have offspring themselves because we have situations where there's hybridization that occurs where organisms that are different species like a tiger and a lion can mate and have offspring and that hybrid is infertile um, and so the tiger and the lion aren't considered the same species they're considered different species because their offspring is not fertile so you have that that kind of idea so the biological species concept has some problems with it. This is the more most widely used and accepted concept or definition for species in biology. But you see, it's based on reproduction. Right? So what about all the species that reproduce asexually? Or organisms that do have a variety of different or alternative uh, methods of reproduction they don't, they don't fit uh, in here. Um, Single-celled organisms don't fit in here. So we actually have, unfortunately, two of our domains of life. So we have three domains of life, the eubacteria, the archaea, uh, and then the eukarya. Well, the bacteria are prokaryotic and they don't reproduce sexually. They don't breed uh, or interbreed. Uh, and the archaea do not breed or interbreed. So, so of all living things on Earth, uh, 
two of the three major groups of organisms you can't apply this definition to. Uh, in addition to that, for the other group, uh, we still have all the protists. Many of them don't reproduce sexually in this way. And then we have fungi and plants and animals. Um, many plants and animals do. Fungies do. And fungi will go over fun fungal reproduction uh, in different uh, lectures. And you'll see that they have variations of this. It's not quite the same. Um, so it's difficult to apply to all living. It's, you can't apply it to all living things, first off. Uh, and it's difficult to apply to some things. It's kind of in between. So generally people tend to be focused on animals and especially ones like humans because people tend to look at themselves and so it works for us but it, it doesn't really work for the rest of life yet there's a lot of debate about other sorts of ways of doing it <clears throat> so another way uh, in addition to that what about fossil organisms because we have a lot of a lot of study of the past and evolution and biology is from the fossil record um, and so we call these organisms different species, uh, but it's based on their appearance, you know, in the fossil record. Uh, some of it is time linked to when they appear, um, when they might disappear in time. Uh, and so that's kind of where this, this approach called a lineage definition. So a lineage definition for species uh, takes into place time and place in uh, the phylogenetic tree. So we have branches, different branches would lead to us to different species, you know, of organisms. And so this is taking into account time and history, you know, in the fossil record. All right. And so that is, we can't really demonstrate it because many of these organisms, they are extinct. Um, so we don't really know, but again, it's difficult to apply this definition to them. So this is what's often used, but it's not great to use with organisms uh, today. You know, so how, how do we you know, have um, Staphylococcus aureus, I mean, it's a genus and species. How do we call it a species different from Staphylococcus epidermidis? Um, a lot, for a lot of these organisms, we're using genetic mechanisms and uh, sequencing of small ribosomal RNA. And we look at comparison of percent difference or similarity between the species. And that's really what a lot of uh, the work is going toward, a lot of comparison of genetic similarity. Where there's some certain problems with that is there's some organisms that are incredibly similar genetically, but they cannot reproduce uh, with one another. So um, they're technically different species by one definition, um, but by another, oh, they would they would be the same species, which just makes it hard, which is why, again, this is in our class is going to be one of the uh, discussion or not debate topics, but a topic that you will kind of argue maybe your view on based on your research. And then there's the very old, you know, this is the, the Linnaean, which has been largely abandoned, um, which is the morphological species concept, which is that organisms who you know, look alike are essentially the same species, organisms that look different are different species. And that's really not going to hold hold up at all um, for most things, um, partly because there's a lot of plasticity in, in some organisms. Uh, there are some things that are the same species and look incredibly different from one another. Um, there are some organisms, because say an ants, for example, in a colony, they're all the same species, but they have different jobs. And because of their jobs, some might be many times larger than others uh, in the same of the same species. They might even be um, sisters from the same mass of eggs. Uh, but because on, of the signals they receive during development, one develops to have a certain job in the colony, and they look incredibly different you know, than others. So we have, you know, those sorts of problems. Here we have another, here I use this as a little example, and I'm not going to get into a lot of detail because it's something that um, people still debate about and are studying quite a bit. Uh, but there's uh, a species of salamander that lives in the United States, uh, California, and, and Oregon, uh, along the West Coast, uh, and, and Satina. And uh, it's called a ring species, or it's sometimes referred to as a ring species, although that term by some people isn't uh, adopted or accepted. Um, but the idea here is that there's a lot of, there are different 
organism, so I'm not giving all the subspecies names um, that often go along with this because that's not the, the point of this. The idea is that there's a, a valley here. that separates the salamanders. So this is a very dry area in here, and the salamanders can't live, they need water uh, for development. Okay, so in these areas here where there's water, the salamanders can develop, and so that's where they live. Uh, as they span up the coast, and, right, and then back down the uh, eastern side uh, here of California, we see a lot of variation in their appearance. So they look different than one another. Uh, but what we find is that they can interbreed with one another, for the most part, um, although there is some reproductive isolation. And usually for a ring species, they kind of like the organisms within the ring can reproduce with one another, but those at the end of the ring, like these, then cannot reproduce with one another, so they can't, can't cross over. So if they tried to, they, they wouldn't be successful, you know, even in reproducing. Um, but one of the problems with this is that in some of the studies, people have found things like, uh, you know, these organisms can breed with one another, but these cannot, so that would mean these are the same species, um, but because these can breed together, that means they're the same species, which means this one's a different species than, than these organisms, which doesn't make any sense, and so it just leads to a lot of confusion and a lot of problems, um, and there are other organisms like this as well, and this is sort of one of the then inherent problems in the biological species concept and the definitions because it just it really cannot apply to everything and there are a number of sort of exceptions uh, and there most likely will need to be at some point in time something that's a little more um, concrete that is adopted uh, by everyone as a definition but since it's a term that's used so much in our course uh, and so much in biology it's important for you to think about it what does species mean and how is it defined uh, so Again, generally, we are going to be mostly referring to, because it's just the most widely accepted, the biological species concept. Right? That organisms who can, within a population, can reproduce with one another and have fertile offspring are considered a species. Organisms who uh, either cannot reproduce with one another um, and have, and they, or they cannot have viable offspring, then are considered different species. Okay, uh, so. This is something, again, in my class, I'll be asking you to research a little bit more as part of a project uh, and do a little writing on yourself.